Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another segment of an unscripted moment. Today, I want to talk about the press conference that I just watched live with Donald Trump and Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, this is the second recording of this video because I really don't want this to be a political video. And I recorded it a few minutes ago and I failed at that. It, was, it turned out, you know, I, I, I just don't want to do that. So I'm going to redo it. So I want to keep it, you know, from a biblical perspective, a scriptural perspective. Um, however, you know, in life, right, like politics glances off of a lot of aspects of our life. And so I want to kind of, I feel that I kind of need to dip my foot in that pond, that pool, but I don't want to jump in. And so, um, so I just want to say, you know, first off, that Donald Trump's our president and because, you know, as such, he has my support. Um, Barack Obama, you know, I didn't agree with most of the things he said or did, but I respected him as the president. You know, I didn't take every chance I had to jump out and speak out against them. Now, do we have our opinions? Are we t entitled to our opinions? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, we are. It's what we do with those opinions, right? So in this forum, I can express my opinions. And like in most forums, and people can just, if they don't want to hear it, they can turn it off. Um, you know, to, to go out on the street with a sign and ram that down someone's throat, I believe that's, you know, crossing the line of, you know, that's, now you're becoming part of the problem, not part of the solution. And so, again, this is where I really got to be careful not to go too far down this road. Um, so, early on, and, and all through the election, but I supported Ben Carson. He dropped out early on. And um, do I think that Donald Trump, you know, coming down to a choice of Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, am I glad Trump got elected? Yeah, I did, I did want to see, you know, I think it's far better than Hillary. Um, do I also think that, you know, shame on us as a nation for putting forth candidates that are Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton? Yeah, I mean, we could have done so much better. Early on in the cycle, we had so many good candidates, you know, we had a few good candidates. So anyway, okay, that's the political part of it, out of the way. I don't want to really go down that road anymore. But now we got Donald Trump, so I believe every American has a responsibility to support him and to respect him. And I think we should pray for him, but I do. I pray for this nation. I want to start by reading a couple very short scriptures. And the first one is Genesis 12, 1 through 3, so it says... Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Okay, now that's Genesis 12, 1 through 3. I'm going to flip over quickly here to Psalms 122. And I'm going to read just a few verses of that. So I start in verse 1. I'm going to read through verse 6. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. So, you know, biblically, biblically scripturally, it's pretty clear you know, where we should be, you know, on the issue of 
Israel. And as a nation, we have a responsibility, you know, not a political or social responsibility. We have a scriptural and a biblical responsibility to support Israel, to stand with them. And the good news is God promises to bless us if we do. And so what I saw in that press conference today was a step in the right direction. And I think that for too long, this nation turned its head, and it turned its back on Israel, turned its head away from them. You know, we looked in another direction. And that was wrong. And so we're getting back on track, and that's good. I think this is huge. You know, biblically, there are other scriptures that, you know, Prophesize about prophesy about the world and the direction we're going in and Israel's place in that. Now, if you look at Israel, right, they're the size of roughly like the size of New Jersey, and they're encompassed on all borders by people that want to wipe them off the face of the earth, and it's been like that pretty much forever, right? So. How do they survive? How are they still there? Well, they're there because God promised to make them a great nation. He promised to protect them, and he's doing that. And he has done that. If you look back, you know, there were incidences, I know, like in 1968 during the war, like over there they had, you know, there's miracles. There's documented miracles that happened that protected Israel from its enemies and you know and I don't have the instances written down written down in front of me and I don't want to try to you know quote them because it's been a long time since I've read the accounts and I don't want to misquote them but if you look if you google it and look it up and do the research it'll be easy to find and so I think that excuse me I gotta let this cat out so if you look and if you see these, these miracles that God performed to protect Israel, it's clear, you know, it's clear their place in the world. And, you know, the Muslims, and again, this isn't anti-Muslim, it's nothing, you know, Muslims are who they are, I have my own opinions about them, this isn't the forum for it, and I'm going to keep it to myself. The facts are that the Muslims now control the Dome of the Rock, which is the site of the original temple. It's in the, you know, the heart of Jerusalem. And the Jewish people can't even step foot in there. And there's going to come a time, the Bible talks about, you know, the rebuilding of the temple and all that, and there's a whole temple institute. Google the temple institute, you know, and, and just, you know, watch some videos and read about that. See how it relates to scripture. But they talked about in the press conference moving the embassy to Jerusalem. Now Trump, you know, that was one of his campaign things. Oh, he he believed in Israel. He's going to move the the embassy to Jerusalem. I think those are all right things to do. Um, I won't say he backpedaled today, but he was asked specifically about it, and he said, "Well, you know, we're going to look at it carefully and." We're going to, it's certainly a possibility. He didn't come out and say, yes, we're going to do it. And I, I think that's prudent. You know, I think in his position, he's got to be careful what he promises. I'd rather have him not promise it if he's not sure he can deliver it than promise it and not deliver it. And I think, and I don't know, but I think that how could you be sure you could deliver it in this climate, right? So, so he's, I think it was prudent for him to kind of take, kind of back up a little. Now, are the people going to, you know, certain people going to look at it and say, oh, he's backpedaling from his campaign promises and, you know, he's done similar things before. I guess that could be construed as that and other issues. But re as it relates to the embassy moving to Jerusalem, yeah, that'd be great. Um, should it be there? Yeah, probably. Um, will we be successful in doing that or will they be successful in doing that? We'll see. But we, as a nation, 
will be blessed, as the scriptures promise us, for having our allegiance to the nation of Israel. I think, and I'm not going to tell anybody else what to do, but for myself, I pray regularly for the nation of Israel. I pray regularly for Donald Trump to do the right thing, not only when it comes to Israel, but you know, in every facet of his president, presidency. Um, I pray for our relationship with Israel. I pray for America to be an ally to Israel because I think that is huge as to where our place is going to be, you know, in the end times. And I think that, as the Bible said, says, God will bless us for that. So, yeah, we need to be there. We need to be an ally to Israel. There's no question in my mind about it. And so what I saw in that press conference was an absolute a step in the right direction. Now, you know, Donald Trump, like, this is true for myself, and I think it may be true for a lot of people, but I can't, I'm not going to speak for anybody but myself, but consider this. If you're a huge Trump supporter, because there are people that are staunch, you know, they firmly believe in Trump. And so, and as I said, I believe, you know, he was the better choice as president. But, again, shame on us for bringing it to that choice. But, I think people weren't so much in love with Trump as they were in love with the idea of the change that Trump represents. After the previous administration... We were at a point where we just, you know, we needed something different. And Trump was saying all the right things. You know, he was the voice for that difference, for that change. And so we elected him. You know, again, going back, I think Ben Carson could have, you know, could have taken on a similar role. Um, whatever. It's water under the bridge. Trump's the president. I'm going to support him. Am I going to jump on the Trump train? Well... I tell you what, I'm running alongside it. You know, I'm not going to cut down trees over the tracks in front of it to force it to derail, that's for sure. So, uh, am I on it? Yeah, I don't know. We'll see how that goes, too. But, um, he's, making a, he's taking a step in the right direction with Israel, I believe. I, I wholeheartedly support that. I think it's... You know, I think it's great. I think it's long overdue. I think it's needed. I think I think this nation needs to be an, an ally to Israel. I think it's scriptural, and I think we have a responsibility to do it. Um, Donald Trump, you know, do I see him as being presidential material? Again, this is my own opinion. It doesn't matter what I think. He is the president. And so he deserves a certain level of respect and a certain level of support. Do we have to agree with everything he represents or does? No. I guess it's easy for me because, for the most part, I do agree with most of the things he's doing. That that makes it easy, right? Because if I didn't, it would be harder. It would be harder to, you know, like it was with Obama. It was hard to have a level of respect for a man like Obama. You know, and for the things he was doing, they some of them outraged me. I mean, did I jump on Facebook and bash him every chance I got? I, I tried not to, you know, and I think I did a pretty good job. Um, again, it bleeds out every now and then, but we this nation has a lot of healing to do. It's got a lot of division that needs to be mended, and and so that's not going to happen by you know by each side screaming from the hilltops their positions and their, you know, and I mean, some of the things people are saying are pretty nasty too, right? Like there's a positive way to bring your opinion out and then there's a not so positive way. So you can either, you know, choose to try to be part of the solution or you're just going to be part of the problem. But the choice is yours, you know, the choice is mine, the choice is for each individual to make. Um, yeah, you know, I got so much I could say about this, but again, I'm really, I really don't want to go down the, po the political, you know, into the political aspect of it all. So, so going forward, you know, let's go back. Israel 
yeah, we need to support them. We need to be their ally. Trump seems to be on board with that. We'll see how that all goes. I'm going to try to link that video. I'm sure it came out as a video now. It was a live stream when I watched it. And um, and if you get it in for two things, if I'm successful, being able to figure out how to do that, which I think I can, and if you have the time and the inclination to watch it, I think it's good. I, I think it, you know, it's positive. It's all positive. And again, if you if you look at biblical prophecy and end times, you know, prophecy, where 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 is it all going to fall? Where are we where are we going to line up and fall in that? You know, there's no mention of America or the United States in the Bible, right? So, does that mean we're not going to be there? Does that mean there is going to be no America? Does it mean there, there is going to be? I mean, would, even if there was an America, would there necessarily have to be a reference to it in the Bible? It doesn't say, and so it's up in the air. Maybe it isn't decided yet, you know? Um, again, God's going to bless those that bless Israel. You know, he's going to curse those that curse them. So if we stand up and throw our support and try to be, you know, through our support, try to be a blessing to the nation of Israel, God will bless us for that. I firmly believe that. And so we need to do it because that's all, the, you know, God said to do it. That's the only reason I need to do it. And so that that's it in a nutshell. You know, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate a thumbs up, a share, a like, a subscribe. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good day. God bless you.